M Cosmetics launched a collection called the Masterpiece Collection where basically they are reimagining the power of neutrals. I did a live last week and so many of you guys were asking if I was going to pick up this collection. I didn't even know it launched. <laughs> I didn't look into it and I now see why you guys wanted to know if I was going to review it because this is a very beautiful neutral collection and surprisingly I actually did receive this collection in PR. I know M Cosmetics has my address somewhere in their system, but they like never send me anything, so I wasn't expecting this. Really excited. I need you guys to know I wasn't gonna pick this up because y'all know how much I need more neutrals in my collection. <laughs> Like, not at all. You know, I'm trying to be a little bit smarter with my money here nowadays. But when this came in the mail, let me tell you, I was... I was not mad at all. This is a stunning collection. So many of you guys seem interested in it as well. So I was like, let's just review it. So this collection comes with two of the Divine Skies eyeshadow palettes, two of the Heaven's Glow Radiant Veil blushes, which I love, and then two lip cushion luminizers. You are able to purchase this whole set for $194. Unfortunately, it looks like on M's website that is sold out. So I will keep you guys updated when it comes back into stock. But all but one one eyeshadow palette are still available if you do wish to purchase the products individually. So let's get a quick overview at what the colors and whatnot are looking at. So we'll take a quick look at the two eyeshadow palettes. These are called the Divine Sky eyeshadow palettes. It's a typical style to the eyeshadow palette she's been launching, but new colors. This is Rodin right here. This is the one that is sold out. It is the lighter one. It looks beautiful, but you're in luck because the one I think I like more is Da Vinci right here, the deeper one. You can just, I feel like your looks can go further with this one. So I'm happy that this one is still available. Both of these are $40 each. And then we have probably my favorite product in this collection. I absolutely love this formula, the Heaven's Glow Radiant Veil Blushes. So the lightest one is Baroque right here, which I feel like could almost be a highlight on my skin tone. We'll see how it plays on the skin. And then Rococo, which is the deeper one. Oof. Mm. And then finally, this is a new formula to me. I've never tried this formula before. We have two of the lip cushions, which are $23 each. Again, both of these, they're neutrals. So we have Mona Lisa, which is the lighter one, and then Van Gogh, which is a little bit deeper. I'm gonna be trying everything on for you today. So if you're interested, Let's get into it. We're gonna get some eyeshadow on my eyes first. Both of these palettes, as I stated before, are $40 each, which is a pretty good price for six shades. One thing I will say about the packaging of these, they're a lot smaller than you probably would expect for a six band palette. I like how travel size they are. In total, you are getting about nine grams of product. These have an 18 month shelf life and are both made in Italy. So we'd love to hear that. Packaging, as you can see, is the same M Cosmetics style packaging. This is their logo basically if you didn't know. Now can I tell you guys something? Just don't hate me but I don't love this packaging. I feel like it's a little cheap. It's fine. I'm not complaining but I'm just saying it's plastic. It's a heavy plastic but it's plastic. I don't feel like it's gonna break or anything. I just don't love the packaging okay. And then the box that they come in by the way is going to look like this. You know and it kind of gives you a description and inspiration of the palette back here. I'm going to quickly pop on some of the Kaleidos tone activator on this eye. Oh, I almost forgot to do swatches. <laughs> Let's do that first. So we are going to do the lighter one that's currently sold out, Rodin. Let's touch these shimmers. Honestly, you guys, I've never tried the M Cosmetics eyeshadow formula, so I'm excited. These swatched pretty. Let's see. I didn't press too hard in the compact, by the way. Oh yeah, these are quite reflective, very beautiful. Let's get into the matte tones. So I like how these are split and the colors that they chose definitely are very intuitive of what kind of look you would want to create with this. Wow, nice and smooth. Okay, so these feel very beautiful. It's a softer formula. Nothing feels overly thick or super, not creamy. They do feel creamy, but you know how some formulations feel super thick? These feel very lightweight, like they might be very easy to blend out, which is a good sign. Now let's go into Da Vinci. This is the deeper one. This is the one that I got feelings for. <laughs> so this one feels like more of a satin as opposed to a shimmer, but look at those. Okay, I'll do this across my arm. I mean, they're swatching. Super beautiful, right? And then I love how these are like more mustardy tones. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so swatch wise, both of these palettes feel really great. And you can see with them side by side that Da Vinci definitely gives more of a deeper effect. But surprisingly, the lighter shade it carries a lot of depth as well because of this shade. So I don't think, yeah, the matte shades are a little bit different, but. Oh, both of these are equally beautiful. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get them on the eyes. We'll do the lighter palette on this eye. So I'm starting off with this shade right here. You, there's a little bit of kickback. Nothing crazy. The shade is a little bit warmer compared to the other shade. That is a similar depth level. Very nice. <laughs> okay, now we're going into the cooler shade. Let's see if there's a difference between the two. Oh yeah, there definitely is. That's good going to run this shade along my lower lash line. Wow, these blended beautifully, I must say. All right, now we're going into the deepest shade. This is going to determine a lot about this palette for me because the deepest shade is always so, so important that it blends, that it builds. I'm happy with that, uh-oh. <laughs> then let's get along the bottom lash line. And using my original crease brush, haze everything out. I'm actually going to run some of that deepest shade quite high into my crease. We're creating a lot of depth with this because I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm taking this more so satin as opposed to metallic shade. I'm popping it underneath the brow. So this works as a great highlight shade, just like that. See how that just lifted the brow? So important. People forget about this step, but it does so much to a look. All right, we're going into the deeper shimmer right here. They do have names, by the way, but I just like to point. <laughs> it picked up on the brush very easily, but let's tap off the excess. And this is going to go into the center of the eyelid. I'm quite moved by this palette. I like it a lot. I really, really do. Never tried M Cosmetics shadows before. They are delightful. Gorgeous. I'm gonna flip my brush over and this shade is more metallic as well. And I'm going to fill in the inner half of the eyelid. Okay, it's not as opaque as I thought as it was going to be with a brush application, though I'm sure if you wet your brush, you could get it there. Let me see how a finger does. I mean, it's gorgeous nonetheless. You can see all that dimension that it has. Very pretty. It definitely has almost like a topper finish. It has a base, don't get me wrong, but it didn't have as strong as a base of, that I was expecting, like the brown. Very pretty nonetheless. Did get a little bit of fallout. Nothing crazy, but it was there. And especially some glitter fallout has happened down there. So maybe if you're gonna use the glitter, consider doing face makeup after. Going to re- Define out here and down here as well. I mean, here's the look. It's it's a neutral look, but it's a stunning neutral look. <laughs> Let me prep this eye and then we will get into the Da Vinci palette. I'm going to do a relatively similar look to this eye right here. I just cleaned off all my brushes, by the way. We're gonna start off with this mustard shade right here, which I am like drooling for. And I'm going to pop this all in the crease. Obviously, this is going to be the more appropriate palette for more medium to deep skin tones, but I think it really is such a good palette for everybody. Wow, this does build up in depth though. I will say this, for being the lightest shade, you can get a pretty sheer layer of it, but if you do a second coat of it, it actually really adds even more depth, which is not so, but it's working itself out beautifully. I love the tone here. Okay, let's use this kind of chocolatey Swiss color and build up the depth here in the outer corner. I would say in the lighter palette, these two shades were definitely a little closer. Whereas I like how in this palette, the two shades are more different to each other, giving each color a little bit more value in the palette and reason for being there. That's something that is so important to me. I just don't want too many shades that are similar, especially if you are limited to just six places, you know? I am spending a little extra time though to blend these shades compared to what I did on the other eye. They are deeper, so they're requiring a little extra love. I'm running a mixture of both shades along my lower lash line. Moment of truth, let's get into the darkest shade. So we're gonna focus that in the outer corner. And then again, I'm doing the exact same thing that I did with the other eye. You definitely see though, this one is darker. Also gonna put whatever's left on my brush down here. 
Dang, I got a really deep base here. Something that I would like to note is I'm not having the easiest time blending that darkest shade out. It's requiring a little bit of love and layering and just a touch of labor. Nothing crazy. It looks really beautiful and milky on the eye, which I enjoy, but I am putting in some work. I will say that, but nothing bad. So I'm getting the tip of a shader brush and we're using the satin shade. I want to run that along the lower lash line because honestly, I just don't have anywhere else to put it and I still want to try it it just wouldn't be an appropriate highlight shade for me <sighs> this shade is fine it's not as exciting to me as the other shades though all right same thing we're gonna put the gold in the center of the lid Ooh, yeah these feel super nice love that this one is not as blingy it's more of a shimmer as opposed to a metallic I would say but now let's go into this shade which is a metallic so this palette I'm noticing is a little bit less glimmery compared to the other palette. I thought I was gonna like this palette better, but I think I prefer the mass in this palette and then I prefer the shimmers in the lighter palette. That makes sense. Cause you can see this is a little bit more my speed in terms of looks, but they're both beautiful. Okay, again, let's redefine the outer corner. Very pretty. So I think both of these are very, very nice quality. I, I think I am preferring the Rodin more than the Da Vinci, which is the deeper one, just cause this look is a little bit more my speed but you really can't go wrong with either. <laughs> I, I feel like you don't need both, but both are great in their own rights. Let me uh, finish off the eyes and we will move on to the cheeks. With the lashes and whatnot, don't the eyes just look delicious? Mmm, brown smoky eyes, <laughs> they get me. You know, I'm not an M Cosmetics expert, but this is my favorite formula that they have, the Heaven's Glow Radiant Veil Blushes. They currently have three shades, so they just added two new shades with this collection. So the first shade that we have right here is Baroque. This one they describe as a burnished beige. I'm interested to see how this is going to look on my skin tone, because it almost looks like it could be a highlight on me, but now, no, this looks like a blush. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's Baroque. The D Deeper one is Ro Rococo or Rococo. <laughs> this is a warm copper with golden undertones. On the advertised photo, it looks beautiful on a model with deeper skin tones. And I think that, yeah, that definitely would work, I think, on a deeper skin tone. Now, don't quote me on that, but it looks like it. Okay, should be interesting because these are two very different colors. If you don't like a shimmery cheek, by the way, you won't like this formula. Let's try the lighter one. So I'm going to use a Wayne Goss number two brush. Oh, it's... I forgot how powdery it could be. It looks like it would be like a gelée formula, but you do get powder with this. Let's see. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a blush. I don't know why I thought it would be a highlight. Let me turn the lights down. Just lights are down so you can really see everything. As you can see, it definitely is a shimmery blush. So if you have like textures or pores, it's not gonna do them favors, you know, but I don't mind it. I think this formula is so pretty that it is what it is. And it has almost like a pinky glow. I don't know if you can see that pinky shift. If you're around my skin tone, this is stunning. I was worried and I'm sorry for downing you. Michelle Fawn, but this is beautiful on my skin tone. Very subtle, very glowy. I like this one. This deeper one should be interesting. I just don't know if this is gonna be for my skin tone, but I'm gonna use a Sonia G detail brush just a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna need too much. And I'm gonna focus this on the back of the cheek. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous as well. I went in really light because it swatched, I thought, pretty deep for me. Wow. I don't know that I love this for my skin tone. I think it could translate as a little dirty on me, but medium and deep skin tones, ooh. So I think, yeah, it would look dirty if I put it on my apple, but if I keep it back here, I like that. Let me put a little bit back here. So we'll add some dimension as well. So if you're around my skin tone, I think you could pass on this unless you like, you know, that bronze look, because this would be great for a bronze look. For me, I like a little bit more of a bright look. This isn't my cup of tea, but this blends in beautifully with like a bronzer. It would be a gorgeous bronze shade, but medium deep skin tones, this is beautiful. I'm gonna top off my cheek with a little bit of Baroque just because I love the way that that looks as well. These are two very, very different shades. Both beautiful. Baroque is more my speed, but Rococo, I'm like, probably sound like an idiot saying that. Let me just 
bring it to the apple of my cheek so that I can see. This is Rococo. Bronzy look for sure, but I really like these as well. I got so excited to talk about them. I forgot to mention they are $34 each, made in Italy and have an 18 month shelf life and the same packaging that they always come in. <laughs> Sorry, got too excited, had to just pop them on my face. M Cosmetics create some quality products. You can't deny that. And let's finish off with a formula that I've never tried before. These are the Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizers. We have Mona Lisa and Van Gogh. They come in just plain white box. These are $23 each. Let's see, 12 month shelf life, made in Japan. So these are formulated with hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. It's supposed to be an ultra comfortable balm that melts into a luxury cushion texture with a gloss finish. So we're gonna start off here with De Mona Lisa, which looks more my speed personally. So they describe this as a beige nude. Oh yeah, you can see that creamy, creamy texture. Let's give her a try. It's a twist up applicator, by the way. This with a brown lip liner. Ugh. So yeah, it is like a balm kind of gloss hybrid. If you layer it too much, it will feel kind of thick on your lips. Very trendy formula though. This is really pretty, but it does kind of melt. So it does get a little messy. That's a beautiful shade. It almost has a little bit of a mauve tone to it. Let's take a look at Van Gogh here. This one is a terracotta nude. So this one is definitely deeper. I don't like how messy these are. They really do just melt at the touch of the skin. So be careful with these. I almost wouldn't keep these in my purse if you live in a warm climate, because I can see it mushing <laughs> all over your face. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful color as well. I do love how glossy they look. They're a bit too messy for me. I think they melt a touch too fast, but they are very, very pretty. I think I'm gonna pop on a brown liner and then put a little bit of Mona Lisa on top because I do feel like I want to line my lips just for that extra level of security. And I'll be back to give you my final thoughts on the collection. Okay, so first of all, wow, right? I am living for this chocolate look that I have on. So overall, I would say this is a very successful collection. I totally can see why you guys wanted to know if I was going to review it or not because it's beautiful for you neutral lovers. As far as the eyeshadows go, I really, really did like them with the deeper palette. You did see I struggled a little bit with the mattes, especially those deeper shades to get them to blend out with ease. It's not one of those formulas that is going to blend themselves out, but it still is a really good formula, quite easy to use. I actually am surprised by this, but I do prefer the lighter shade Rodin. I think the shimmers have a little bit more dimension and glimmers to them, which is more my speed. So I will eagerly be awaiting for this palette to come back because it's really pretty. And even though it's the lighter palette, you, you do get quite a lot of depth with it anyways. Um, and the deeper palette still is very, very nice though. If you're eyeing it, I don't discourage you at all. It's super gorgeous as well. Like I don't feel like you need both of these, but I almost couldn't tell you which one to get because they're both very good. And those subtle differences do make a difference based on what your preference is. The Heaven's Glow blushes did not disappoint as per usual. If you're around my skin tone, I think Baroque is definitely more natural for us. It's going to be a little bit more our speed. But if you do like kind of that burnt look, uh, bronziness, that burnt bronzy look, this one is super nice as well. I'm very happy with keeping it. I think it looks nice on me too. Both of these are beautiful. I love this formula. I'm very happy to collect every shade that they have. Uh, the only product that I'm not too sure about are the lip cushions. I wanted to show you. So I did use some of M Cosmetics Velvet Lip Liner in Foxy. So I used a really dark brown and I think the Mona Lisa looks gorgeous, but this is what I'm talking about. It's just super duper messy. I don't like that and I feel like it really does melt down with your body temperature and I just don't know how long this is going to last if you use it for an everyday product. So I'm not completely sold on these. They're beautiful though, but you look. I think they might swim about too much. These are the only things that personally I would pass on and they're not even that bad. I just need to get a feel for the formula more, but uh, check. We like these two products. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Let me know, are you planning on picking this collection up? How many of you are interested in M Cosmetics? Should I start keeping a close eye on their launches and review them for you guys? Let me know. Yeah, thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video and I will surely see you guys in the next one. I guess have a good one.